Welcome back. We bring you breaking news from OpenAI's live event. A new version of ChatGPT4. That's their latest and greatest model. This new experience will be available to over a billion users. I'm going to be interviewing at OpenAI. Have you heard of them? OpenAI? Huh? Sounds vaguely familiar. <laughs> Kidding, of course. <laughs> That's incredible, Rocky. What kind of interview? You said that this is a time for soul searching in social media businesses, and, and you were part of building the largest one. I feel tremendous guilt. It is eroding the core foundations of how people behave by and between each other. My worst fears are that we cause significant, we, the field, the technology, the industry, cause significant harm to the world. I think if this technology goes wrong, it can go quite wrong. An anomaly on Capitol Hill. Private tech CEOs asking for more government regulation. It's usually the other way around. If you're old enough to remember a time before the internet, you remember just how momentous the establishment of the World Wide Web really was. Within a generation, your digital life became more important than your physical one. Your digital reputation was all that mattered. But then, around eight years ago, the internet died. At least, this is the contention of the so-called dead internet conspiracy theory. It sounded crazy at first, but I'm a believer now. The killer? Artificial intelligence. Most analyses of the dead internet theory trace back to this one thread on the Agora Rhodes Macintosh Cafe forum, originally compiled by several anonymous users in the January of 2021. It's a mishmash of anecdote, conspiracy, and classically offensive 4chan language that claims that the internet died sometime around 2016. Its most bombastic claim is that, quote, the U.S. government is engaging in an artificial intelligence-powered gaslighting of the entire world population." End quote. The method? AI-powered bots that have subtly subverted and steered culture towards nefarious ends. It would be impossible to validate the most paranoid claims in the post, but others now seem, obviously, viscerally true. The internet does feel empty now, doesn't it? dead. Nothing to see. Nothing to do. The internet may seem gigantic, but it's like a hot air balloon. Nothing inside. This progenitor of a famous conspiracy theory doesn't sound so crazy anymore. It was just posted too early. If it was written after the Cambrian explosion of generative AI in our information ecosystem, it may have even been celebrated as a great cultural insight. While an Illuminati-style global gaslighting campaign still seems unlikely, the evidence that the internet may have slipped out of human control is everywhere. Simply put, most website visitors are not humans. In 2016, the security firm Imperva released a report that found that bots were responsible for over half of all web traffic. The report also found that every third visit to any website on the internet is probably from a malicious attack bot. GitHub says AI helps their programmers write up to 30% of their code. The company Cybra estimated that before Elon Musk took over, between 11 and 13% of Twitter accounts were bots and were responsible for a disproportionate amount of the content. YouTube engineers coined the term the inversion to describe the looming point at which fake views would surpass real ones. Google is currently worried that its world-changing search algorithm will drown in the current tidal wave of AI-generated content and become far less useful, if at all. You see examples of these takeovers already happening on Facebook, where images of a crustacean-adjacent Jesus Christ have been going viral and garnering hundreds of millions of engagements. The comments on these posts leave little room for hope that the internet can be revived. I think the internet was terminally ill before ChatGPT was announced and released. I, I think the biggest watershed moment when you look at this sort of theory of the decaying internet is, is the release of algorithmic feeds. I think that algorithmic ranking systems 
sector, AI driven, really set the stage for just endless worthless pieces of content and sort of just the whole internet to be optimized in the most absurd ways. But the internet is not just social media, even if it feels that way, and the bots have infiltrated there too. You can buy AI-generated poetry online. You can watch films with Silicon screenwriters. You can listen to podcasts with dead celebrities. You can read the news reported by your favorite neural network spawn. You can be unsettled by the first music video generated via artificial brain. Generative AI, like ChatGPT, is the reason why, if the internet isn't dead and devoid of people already, it soon will be. A blurry landscape of AI and human interaction, as one paper calls it. Shrimp Jesus is obviously fake. Other content isn't so obvious. Fake images routinely fool millions of people and make headlines now. Manipulated content creates what's trending. Malicious AI creations force the hands of platforms and governments alike. You can easily create entirely fake subreddits where every post and comment and reply is AI generated. You can create an infinite amount of music without an ounce of human creativity. This live stream of generative heavy metal music has been playing nonstop since 2019. Even an internet-enabled job like Instagram influencing is trivially easy to emulate. And if any of these recent phenomena are still in the uncanny valley for you and you think you can identify them, soon you won't be able to. Very soon. If I were to add anything to dead internet theory, it would be that the public release of ChatGPT specifically was a watershed moment, and not a positive one. Its release and record-breaking adoption both created enormous economic incentive for every knowledge work industry on Earth to create and incorporate generative AI into their businesses, turbocharging the technology, and allowed anyone, with any intention, good or bad, to create bottomless pits of lifeless digital corpses, at scale, for next to nothing. According to Timothy Shoup of the Copenhagen Institute for Future Studies, quote, in the scenario where ChatGPT gets loose, the internet would be completely unrecognizable, end quote. And in such a scenario, Shoup says, 99 to 99.9% .9 of online content might be AI generated by 2025. Unfortunately, this is the scenario we're living in. That's just months from now. The internet died not because people can be fooled by manipulated media. That's always been true. It died because synthetic media, like that created by Sora, ChatGPT, DALL-E, Midjourney, and others, can emulate human creativity at a scope and scale that is impossible for humans to engage with or sift through. After its initial release, ChatGPT was creating more synthetic text for its users than appears in all physical books ever written every two weeks. We've already prognosticated the tremendous effect on the knowledge work landscape. We've already seen an explosion of synthetic media that targets our most vulnerable. All of this technology, backed by huge economic incentive, is only going to get better and faster and less identifiable. It will get to the point where not even your own friends and family will be able to tell the difference between you and your synthetic. That's why Scarlett Johansson, who famously voiced an AI in the movie Her, had to pursue legal action against OpenAI, the developer of ChatGPT. They used a simulacrum of Johansson's voice in their 4.0 model, even after she explicitly declined involvement. <laughs> oh, Rocky, that's quite a statement piece. I, I mean, you, you'll definitely stand out. Everyone thought it was her. No wonder so many of us have turned off our lights in the dark forest internet. It's a wilderness of bots and unsettlingly human text and deepfakes and bad actors. We stay siloed in our discords and slacks and substacks and podcast forums and newsletters because the internet is not only dead, it is dark and full of terrors. What was first conceived as a conspiracy theory by world governments to control the population came true. Not because DARPA or the CIA deemed it so, but because some tech bros in California recklessly released a self-improving, revolutionary, universally applicable technology to hundreds of millions of people without our consent. 
the goal of the internet was to connect the world in this sort of beautiful vision of building a more interconnected society, which would theoretically be a beautiful and amazing thing. And I think where we went wrong is when it started to get warped by this really hyper-capitalist tech environment that we live in. And so you started to see these giant social media companies come and disrupt things. Now we're in sort of the natural endpoint of that, where they've pushed so hard into the algorithmic world that everything has to be optimized to the point that everything's just going to be AI-generated garbage, basically feeding each other. Losing the internet to bots and synthetic media is more consequential than losing the fun of their early web. It's an epistemological threat. As Nina Schick writes in Deepfakes, The Coming Infocalypse, it's an old Russian disinformation tactic to not just flood an information ecosystem with false information, but with information generally. Once there is too much noise in the signal, people start to tune out. They trust media less and less, as sorting and sifting through it all requires more and more cognitive effort. They don't engage as much in the democratic process. They turn towards strongmen. They turn towards conspiracy. They turn against expertise and facts and authority when nothing is true or cannot be judged to be so. This is what generative AI has done, and it's done it all by itself without any help from the KGB. Bad actors can now manipulate large swaths of people to do anything you want. You don't realize it, but you are being programmed. If it feels like the internet is more than just dead, that it's dangerous, that's because it is. According to an observatory report from the Europol Innovation Lab, quote, today, threat actors are using disinformation campaigns and deep fake content to misinform the public about events, to influence politics and elections, to contribute to fraud, and to manipulate shareholders. Many organizations have now begun to see deep fakes as an even bigger potential risk than identity theft. End quote. A dead internet makes it easier to harass, extort, create non-consensual pornography, disrupt financial markets, stoke political unrest, and more. The efforts to regulate the proliferation and use of generative AI are, as could be expected, lagging far behind the adoption and expression of the technology. Do we need an international agency to deal with this? Do we need new privacy laws? Where is the technology that can identify bots and deepfakes as quickly as they can be generated? Is AI art real art? Is synthetic music real music? Is anyone alive out there? Think about where we're going to be in 10 years and just how easy it will be to generate content at scale um, and what sort of systems we'll build to navigate those pieces of content, I just think it's going to be a completely different internet. So I do think that the internet that we probably grew up with, like the original version of the web, the human version of the web is dead. We're in a dangerous spot. Like how history can be meaningfully split into the time before nuclear weapons and the time after, generative AI and the death of the internet seems like it will be another historical delineation. They are both technologies that instantly change the world. It mattered who had them and who developed them. Both were tested without public consent, both with extreme criticism. Regulations for each were slow or toothless. Both put enormous power in the hands of just a few people. Both rendered certain previous technologies obsolete. And both have the power to obliterate whole populations, whether they be physical or digital. With generative AI, we can do it a lot better. Generative AI is the nuclear bomb of the information age. The internet may not be dead in the way the original conspiracy theory claimed. It may not even be dead in the way that I claim here. But what seems indisputable is that the internet has changed for the worse. It doesn't feel as fun, or as creative, or as connecting or is endlessly interesting. Generative AI has come along with a good enough simulacrum of human intelligence and poisoned the well. How we purify it, I don't know. Rapid, large-scale government regulation feels heavy-handed, but necessary. 
There haven't been many ways historically to fight meaningfully against massive economic incentives like generative AI has. I suppose this is just another warning. A warning from someone who lives on the internet and can see its headstone from here. Until next time.